Up Unicorn here with a topic. What is your femininity budget? Elements of a successful budget include accurate spending categories, income projection, realistic goals, regular reviews, tracking for cash purchases, categories for irregular expenses, and savings. The goal is to live at or beneath your means, never above them. You don't want to end up in the poor house trying to stunt like so many financially illiterate people do. Your femininity budget is an allocation of funds spent purely on enhancing, enchanting, and even exaggerating your femininity. If you're already a consciously feminine woman, then you know (laughs) this is not about to be a cheap conversation. If not, prepare for a not-so-economical list of extensions of your femininity. This is going to be one of those it-takes-money-to-make-money type of situations, but please hear me out. Like the video and let's get started. Alrighty. So first, (laughs) you've got to start from somewhere. Ask yourself, am I at ground zero? Are you unable to adorn and enhance your looks due to lacking financial resources? If so, at this point, as much as the introvert in me hates working in public spaces, sis, get a job, a full-time job. I know that's easy for me to say as a kept woman, but I've worked literally all around the world in all sorts of occupations, masculine jobs included, which I do not, in all capital letters, do not recommend. After the bare necessities are taken care of, you're going to need a regular regimen of hair and nails. There's no way around it. Whether your nails are acrylic, dipped, you're, you're taking care of your natural, like, like there's no way around it. You're going to need it. So natural or processed, it is what it is. Now, Afro textured naturals spend nearly as much money on products that non-naturals spend on touch-ups. I said that a little bit weird. Let me try that again. So, <laughs> um... Afro-textured naturals spend nearly as much money on products that non-naturals spend on touch-ups at hair salons. Hopefully it made sense that time. So hair extensions are a big deal because they remain as styled for longer periods of time than our natural hair does. Even the most beautiful naturals wear braid or hair extensions because humidity can kill a natural hairstyle in less than five minutes. Ask me how I know. Let's not even discuss shrinkage and all the product it takes to avoid it. I personally have emptied entire jars of product on one hairstyle. It was like a wash and go. (laughs) It's never a wash and go. (laughs) It's never wash and just go, okay? These days, I use lots of water and oil, but I also purchase two or three $30 to $40 wigs a month. Leaving the house less due to current events has allowed me to slow down somewhat, but synthetic wigs, they ruin fast, you know, as opposed to like human hair wigs and weaves, you know, they're more expensive because they don't ruin as fast. As women, we can cut corners on clothing. Thank God. Okay. (laughs) We can wear a $10 dress, $20 shoes, but hair and makeup, not so much. We can't really cut corners there. My partner can literally look at my face and tell whether I'm wearing MAC cosmetics or not. Needless to say, he cranks out the cash for it because he knows what he wants. Now, I've tried cheaper foundations from other companies that I will not name here, but it suffices me to say that my partner can tell straight away. If you've got normal to dry skin, you most likely have small pores as well. (laughs) And you better thank your creator for this as a trait because you, ma'am, can actually purchase cheap drugstore makeup. And you should, so you can spend the bigger bucks where you cannot pass so easily. I'll get to that in a moment. As for me, though, I've got combination skin, acne, 
large pores, which basically means that like cheap makeup will set into my facial grooves and age me by at least half a decade. It's not a good look. So if you're in my lane when it comes to skin, you get what you pay for when it comes to makeup. My matte compacts are just under $40, while my lip and eyeliners are about $18. The lipsticks cost a bit less than the lip liner and eyeliners, but, you know, it, it's still, you know, it's not a $9 pencil or something like you might get at a drugstore. It's double digits for sure. So the lipsticks cost a little bit less than lip, lip liner, but by the time I'm done getting ready to go live or go out, I've got a $100 face. I've got a $107 face. And needless to say, I'm uninterested in going on a date that costs less than my face. Now, if you're wearing Pat McGrath or Dita Von Teese, your face costs twice as much as mine and no man should be taking you out unless he can do better than what you've done for yourself. I mean, this is the goal, attracting the type of man you idealize. Some women have great skin and terrible hair. It's too fine or too processed, breaks off, won't grow, etc. Spend on hair what you don't need to spend on makeup. You might like MAC, but if you are the average like uh, East African Somali woman with smooth, normal to dry skin, sis, you don't need it. You don't need it. <laughs> you can get away with cheap drugstore makeup. If you can get away with it, get away with it. I spend very little on hair because I've got great hair. I'm no horn tooter, but I'm also honest. I don't have to try hard with wigs because I can leave out as much of my real hair as I need for blending. Uh, my hair looks like every wig I purchase. People often think that my wigs are actually my natural hair. Fun fact, my hair is longer than every wig I own, but for me, it's the difference between wearing two Pocahontas braids in my real hair or some kind of a bun, as opposed to wearing a luxurious crown of false flowing locks of lioness of loveliness. <laughs> if you're like me, you can go cheaper on hair, but not on makeup. If you're my opposite, consider finding a good stylist at a decent hair salon. Hair matters. People judge others almost immediately by their hair. It's just the truth of human nature. Some people can't get jobs because they've got locked hair. Others are seen as loose for wearing red hair, while natural haired black women in the TWA phase, that stands for teeny weeny afro, po woman, politicized as black identity extremists and radicals because they've got a fro. And people are like, oh, afro, black power. <laughs> Angela Davis, Huey P. Newton, <laughs> you know, hotep hotep. Look, triplets in the same outfit can wear these three different hairstyles and be conceived and perceived totally different. How do you want to be perceived? Beyonce wears everything from bone straight 360 lace fronts to her natural waist length crown of afro textured curly hair. Switching it up shows the dynamism of your personality, but if you want to be perceived as some kind of a sleek, mysterious femme fatale, for example, consider wearing straight dark hair as opposed to something fluffy and blonde. And be prepared to pay well for the look. Wig installs can easily cost you upwards of $250 or any type of sewing for that matter. Expect to, to pay $50 and up for a silk press by a professional. Getting a silk press bi-weekly, to me, is silly. What good is a silk press full of smelly dandruff and product because you didn't wash your hair for two weeks? A silk press once a week is best if you're going to get that silk press on your real hair. If your hair is fake, then you've got options. There's not as much combing and scalp revealing and scalp scratching with combs and things like that. Okay, you've got options because so much of the hair is hiding. <sighs> Also, if your hair does not smell after two weeks without a wash, you're not exercising enough. Makeup and hair aside, most men are not aiming for a woman with a round silhouette. You've seen the silhouette challenge on TikTok, right? So you know what time it is. Sweat, sis. Braid extensions are tricky. After all, most of us have a sister or a cousin who braids and does not charge much. But if you're going to have them done by a professional, 
be prepared to pay a minimum of $175, depending on how long your hair is, how dense your hair is, and what style you are seeking. I know personally my braids could easily cost three and four hundred dollars with my big old head and big old hair and considering the density and length. It can go up to that amount. I've seen people pay more, but like in general, like unless your cousin's doing it for $60 or $80, like if you're going to a professional, like it is what it is, it's going to be above 100 and that's a starting price, meaning after an assessment, they might charge you more. A single pack of human hair on wefts starts at like $40, depending on the length. A bag of yakky textured braiding hair could be $5, but let's face it, you're going to need like 10 of them to achieve your braided or crochet style. Reversing for a moment back to skincare. If you've got skin anything like mine, there really is no way, there, there's no easy way around purchasing expensive products. Acne scarring leaves me looking like a Dalmatian unless I am consistently using Paula's Choice or something of a similar brand drugstore i don't oh i was about to name some names drugstore products don't cut it for my face i have tried I, i've even tried going the route of using black seed oil baking soda hydrogen peroxide turmeric you know olive oil and all things excuse me all things hocus pocus on my face <laughs> But I don't look human without my I don't look human without my Paula's choice. <laughs> Unless of course an esthetician or a dermatologist has seen me. Assess yourself honestly. Like the better you look, the better of a man and frank the better a man and frankly the better society is gonna treat you. It's called the halo effect, where people ascribe to you good qualities without knowing you because you're good looking. It's shallow, it's vain, it's reality. Maybe you need Botox, fillers, or 360 liposuction. What can you afford though? Now, given the weather, I'm snowed in, so I'm not about to front like I'm at the gym working out. I put on the same amount of social isolation weight everyone else has. I am, however, connected to two gyms, one with trainers and a third 24-hour gym within my apartment complex. So, um, sis, you don't have to lift, lift weights or do squat thrusts, but you do need to walk. Walking is the cure for so many things from cellulite to brain fog. And I know some of us, maybe you don't have anywhere to walk to when you want to dance. That counts. So if you're not a dancer, you know, you need to walk, you need to stretch, you need to sweat. Everything else is optional. Lifting weights and controlled weights, free weights, all, all that stuff is optional. But you do need to walk, you do need to stretch, you do need to sweat. Now, if you're like me and you need braces, <laughs> uh, no transition, just braces, boom, teeth, boom. There's almost no way around that $4,000 price tag unless you've got like really good insurance. So please take care of your mouth before getting a Brazilian butt lift. <laughs> teeth before BBLs. Priorities. Your heart health depends so much on your oral health both spiritually and physically when the mouth is sick it attacks the heart sure there are other reasons for heart problems but don't let this be the reason for you cancel that out now my favorite mouthwash is actually called smart mouth <laughs> but i currently use a matching toothpaste mouthwash set of crest 3d white now although my instinct is to floss with a placker that's just what works for me some people are good at string pulling it from the little boxy thing but my tool of choice is usually the placker. However, I recently, or I mean last year, I purchased a water pick uh, to painlessly remove food and funk from in between my teeth. I mean, it cost about $70, but by the time I needed one, I had a man in my life to get it for me because I spent the time and money on beautifying myself inwardly and outwardly. The beauty regimen I have today, I'll be honest, I couldn't maintain it on my own. Um... I did do enough to attract someone who could do that for me, and I want the same for other women who are like me. A cheap way to naturally beautify yourself is by drinking plenty of water and eating oranges. I know you guys hear about water every day, every upload, every YouTuber, but it's just, 
it's amazing how much water can do and how much we neglect water for coffee, for tea, for other beverages. Like water alone, like if you go hard on water for just a week, you'll look in the mirror and be like, whoa, like you'll actually look younger. It's, it's a big deal. So another big deal is eating oranges. <laughs> Smarties, cuties, satsumas, tangerines, these things are jam-packed with vitamin C and fades, um, and fades, marks, and scars like a fade cream would. So eating anything orange, whether it's carrots, yams, or citrus fu- fruits, those enhance beauty. Fun fact, these are one of the great offerings for the Orisha of the seven African powers called Oshun, who Beyonce is a child of and representative of. Oranges, cinnamon, and honey are among her favorite offerings, befitting a deity of love and beauty because, well, one enhances the other. So what oranges are going to do the most for you, first of all, they're going to boost your mood and your immune system, but they it fades marks, like really and truly. Like you might actually look in the mirror and find yourself looking a little bit lighter. I mean, the, the looking lighter should be temporary, but it definitely will work on those over-melanated scars if you're a person like me who suffers from hyperpigmentation. Oranges will do that for you. <laughs> now, another food, and I'm talking about food and things at this point because I realize beauty has a price tag. And beauty in itself is a currency that needs rec- currency, that requires currency. So while I do believe in spending the big money on Mac and Dita Von Tees and, excuse me, other places, uh, when, there, when there's an easy way around something, I definitely want that for other people. So another food that I love that you may not is okra, okay? So if there were a vegetable that should have had a prettier name... <laughs> it's that one because it increases beauty and extends a youthful look. I mean, I have seen people put okra everywhere, but all you need to do is put it in your mouth. Your hair, your nails, and skin complexion will thank you for eating okra regardless of how it's prepared. I mean, unless, of course, you bread it and fry it, right? I mean, you might still get some level of benefit out of the okra, but by the time you fry flour and oil... You know, the, these breaded fried things like you're actually creating a new chemical pa- compound when you take flour and fry it in oil. Right. And that new chemical compound has zero <laughs> respect for beauty. Your weakest attribute is what you're going to need to spend the most money on. If you are overweight, I'm not going to recommend a diet l- like ever. Consider intermittent dry fasting because that's actually something that's good for the human body that we know that that is centuries old that we can rely on. Now, if you don't know what intermittent dry fasting is, make a Muslim friend and ask if you can share in Ramadan with them. So Muslims fast the ninth month of the Islamic lunar calendar year and it's called the month of Ramadan. And they fast for all 30 days. I know people are like, oh my God, you're going to die. You fasted for 30 days. What do you No, It's just no food, no water, sun up to sun down. And then at night you have a meal. I've seen people call this, what is it called? OMAD method, one meal a day. I mean, this is a centuries old religion, but I'm just like, intermittent dry fasting is really good for you. I know some people say they recommend water fasting and I understand why, but I I don't recommend water fasting. I just, my thing is dry fasting. Just put nothing in your mouth, right? Anyhow, um, in my teens, I was a dog owner of multiple dogs, right? When they got sick, they stopped eating. So very ignorantly, I'm a teen, right? I tried to force them to eat, but I learned very quickly that they were healing themselves by giving their body the freedom from digestion to work on the source of the ailment. Isn't that something? Like, it's like they knew somehow innately that their body gives so much energy to digestion that they needed to cut that out in order to allow the energy to go somewhere else. 
it's it's an innate knowledge that they have. And for me, I mean, that's a sign for anybody who thinks. For any group of thinking people, that is a sign. So definitely dry fasting. I'm I'm not a nutritionist, but back when I wanted to be one, I discovered that the best way to go on a diet is portion control and adding more food. So a lot of times people create diets and they're interested in subtracting food, subtracting food. How do I, you know, get rid of this, stop eating that. The cure is to add more food, not to take food away. As in adding better food to your daily diet to take up the room for the lesser choices. So here's an example. When I was in college, I asked members of the football team, like, why they always ate these monster salads before their actual lunch. And they told me what they were taught because they've got all kind of athletic trainers and nutritionists, you know, helping them perform as best as they can, right? You know, the football teams, they they fund these universities, real talk. So their lesson was this, the body can only digest so much before it turns the rest of what you put in it into fecal matter and waste. So they'd eat a huge salad and then chase it with nachos or pasta, something knowing that, you know, that food would only do them half the harm. And not something. So instead of, oh, you know, I can't eat any more, you know, African-American soul food, whatever else. It's like, okay, well, just wake up in the morning. And, you know, if you add, you know, some avocados to that egg scramble, or if you add, you know, a whole smoothie before that, you're going to, your belly can only take so much before you're like, all right, I've had enough. So if you have like an avocado and pear smoothie before that meal, you kind of, you know, you, you end up with some leftovers. You end up with some very natural portion control. So moving right along to white sugar, because white sugar... I mean, if there were a food I could say makes you dumb and ugly, I, I hate to use both of those words. I feel like they are profane. It would be white sugar. White sugar, white sugar. It is the devil. It's not good for you. It is crack. Crack is whack. Crack is cheap. Look, Splenda is not good for you, but it's cocaine, okay? So white sugar is going to be crack (laughs) and Splenda's cocaine. Now both, uh, you know, these are not health foods. They're not. But one is full of calories and one has zero calories. So for me, and what I recommend for other people, yes, is to exchange the sugar in your coffee for a zero calorie sweetener that is not equal and that is not sweet and low. Do not use equal, do not use sweet and low. They are, I mean, they're, if white sugar is the devil, those two are the devil's imps, okay? Um, here's that. Um, there's honey and there's grade A maple syrup and... What happened recently over the years is that uh, maple syrup, the best maple syrup used to be called grade B. And because it didn't make any sense to have the best be grade B, even though B could stand for best, they finally changed that around. So now maple maple syrup grade A is the one that people are using for things like the famed lemonade diet, right? With the cayenne pepper and, you know, the distilled water, maple syrup, right? That thing. So look, there's maple syrup, there's agave, there's all kinds of actually healthy sweeteners. But white sugar and high fructose corn syrup are more destructive to your mind, body, and soul than I could ever describe to you. I mean, there are people who have walked away from ADHD and all of its medications because they stopped having, you know, high fructose corn syrup. There are children sent to alternative schools for behavioral problems who were given an organic diet in the alternative school and all of a sudden they weren't violent anymore. Like, I I could never tell you what kind of possession, like what what high high fructose corn syrup is designed to do to you. I, I could never, I, I could never, if I made my channel all about high fructose corn syrup, I, I wouldn't be able to, to stop talking about it and its damages. There are so many different documentaries that you can watch. Um, what comes to mind right away is Food Inc. But um, because that's political and I try, you know, I, I try to avoid politics when I can. Unfortunately, just being an African-American woman politicizes your identity in and of itself but just um 
like I have tears in my eyes when I used to have second graders. The first thing I taught them about was high fructose, high fructose corn syrup, because um, it doesn't just make you put on weight. It can stifle your potential. And I love my kids, so I, I didn't want to see their potential sucked out of them. And some doctor or some person coming to tell them that they've got ADD and autism and, and all this other stuff. And really, you know, I'm like, her mouth is blue. She's been eating candy all day. She she can't sit still. What is that? This is not science, <laughs> you know. But um, look, there's no need to be a vegan or some kind of a breath Aryan. But try not to poison yourself on this level up journey. Let me just, uh, I'll leave it there. So in summation, when it comes to a femininity budget, I recommend that you spend the most where you are the weakest. The investment will pay off for the drop of patience, right? Because I'll be honest, I don't have the thickest patience. <laughs> Thick thighs, thin patience. But with a drop of patience and consistency, these things are going to pay off. So spend the most where you lack the most. Cheap shoes, cheap accessories, cheap dress. But if your hair is a problem, you don't get to buy a cheap weave. And if your skin is your issue, you don't get to skimp on makeup or skincare. So here's to your success. All the best to you. Horns. <laughs> Horns up, okay? We're going to make it through this journey. Um, all right. I'm up at a unicorn and I'm out of here.